Hey everyone, this is Wobbly Wallaby. Today, I'll be showing Jormungandr in action in PvE. This class can dish out a lot of damage when it procs its skills, but how well does it actually do when soloing things? I'll show you my build and try it out in Legend Instances, Oracle Dungeon, and MVP Hunting, so you can see if there's any hope for a good magic PvE DPS class that doesn't cost BCC to buy. Previously, I made a video covering Jormungandr's skills, weapon, and analysis. I'll put a link in the description, this video instead will focus more on the class in action. First here is the gear I'm using. I'm using spell crit gear. For my offhand, I'm not using the ignore magic defense offhand. My ignore magic defense is high enough, so I can use the magic damage increasing offhand instead. The rest of the gear focuses on getting high skill damage, magic penetration, and magic attack. For weapon, Wizard's Power is the highest damaging weapon for me. His class specific weapon is too defensive and is not ideal for PvE DPS. For Oracle Mirror, I use the plus 15 Oath Book for the magic attack percentage. I use the Lord of Vain for the magic penetration percentage and the 15% elemental coefficient effect for Ancient Relic. With food buffs, here are my stats. I had to allocate my attributes to get the 119 attribute points for the Gacha Tail Beautiful Ensemble in order to get the skill damage increase. I have 42,000 magic attack, 480% attack speed, 74% magic penetration, 68.2% skill damage, 250% magic damage, 124% magic damage increase, 198.5% ignore magic defense, and I have 60% earth damage increase. Next, for Adventure Handbook, I have 133% magic damage deposits, and 4,427 magic attack. This beta account is pretty stacked, and I'm using some of the best gear and gadgets in the game. So with all of that, I should be destroying the bosses, right? We'll see. If you need BCC to make your class better, then try Smile.1. Smile.1 allows you to get discounted BCC and premiums for Ragnarok Mobile. They've been around for more than 8 years and have lots of global business partners for other games too. I'll put a link in the description. Thanks to Smile.1 for sponsoring this video. Next for skills, I had the level 7 core hero skill. This is essential for having the highest proc rate possible. You have 60% chance for damaging skills and 15% chance for buffs. You also need level 7 to have an extra slot for proccing the skills. My super imposition slots, which are the skills that can proc, contains the skill that helps him do critical damage, and his two earth damaging skills, which are his primary DPS. In my manual bar, it's full of self buffs and damage reduction skills. Next, I'll show this build in action. I'm going to fight the legend golem. I cast my self buffs, cast the skill that will give me 30% magic penetration, transform into the snake, and hit the golem. The highest crits I can get are around 5 million. For recasting buffs, I find the cast time is a bit too long, and you aren't attacking during that time, and you don't have any continuous AoE coming down, so I find it's very inconvenient to recast things. Survivability wise, it's quite good since you can turn into a snake, which is very good since you get max HP. You also have some nice damage reduction skills. But despite that, I still find that the DPS just isn't high enough. Also, even with a 60% proc rate, I find the damage just isn't consistent enough. They should increase the proc rate for PvE to be something higher, otherwise the DPS will be lacking. Next, let's see this in action against the Legend Dragon. I cast my buffs, turn into a snake, and start hitting it. One important thing about being a snake is you can't ride your mount, so your move speed is nerfed immediately, and this makes it hard to run away from stuff. The range of Jormungandr is nice though, that's probably one of the things I like the most about this character. But unfortunately again, your DPS just isn't high enough so you can't deal with legend instances. Next is Oracle Dungeon Elite 10. This run was very smooth and I think it does very well. An annoying thing is when you get stunned, your damages immediately stop. 
Here I get stunned by King Clown and I can't do anything for a little bit. It does well against Sandstorm since you don't have to cast anything, so you can still do a lot of damage. Clearing Oracle was quite easy, so I did enjoy using it for this instance. Next is MVP Hunting. This class has the same problem as Taekwon. The damage and proc rate just isn't high enough to compete with other classes. You are most certainly going to lose the last hit to classes like Saitama or Wataru's. Also, being stuck to Earth doesn't give you a huge advantage since many bosses are not weak to Earth so you're really not double damaging very often. One class that it did quite well against is Seed. Seed can drain your SP, but because your auto attacks don't require SP, you can still keep hitting it even if you have none. Against APOC MVPs, it was quite painful. The damage was just too low, so it did very poorly. Well, how about farming? With the 9 meter range, it surely must be pretty good. It's the same amount of range as a Stellar Hunter. Sadly, the proc rate at 60% is way too low. Again, I think for PvE, they need to increase it to something higher, like 80 or 90%. I thought this class might have potential for farming, but sadly, due to the proc rate, it is only a dream. Overall, I think many people are disappointed that this magic class is primarily for PvP. After the release of Rathcracy on the beta server, which can mow down bosses very easily as a physical class and still do okay at PvP, it's unfortunate to have this release right after since it looks very underwhelming. Unfortunately, Jormungandr is not a busted PvE class like Rathcracy, so we have to wait again to see what the next magic class is like. Genos is still the best hero class for magic DPS, but unfortunately that was a limited time class and it cost real money to purchase. Even Genos isn't perfect, it is stuck to wind and fire. However, despite that, it can overpower bosses since its DPS is so high. As you can see here, Genos is melting the dragon much faster than Jormungandr can ever wish for. Well, I hope you enjoyed this sneak peek. What do you think of Jormungandr? If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. If you want more sneak peeks, check out this playlist over here.